Have you finished arguing with people on Twitter about Cristiano Ronaldo applauding the away end yet? <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah, no, I got, got a bit of traction that, didn't it? So I, I tweeted, and then this has become a thing, hasn't it? You know, what does Ronaldo do at full time? I'm not like one where I'm kind of voyeuristically observing him from, you know, as soon oh, as the final was to go, zooming in. Um, but I was just looking at, you know, the way that players reacted. And clearly he'd had a very frustrating night for himself where he's in this stadium where he's had, you know, what well, in the city where he's had so much success against the team that he's had so much success against and nothing went right for him, did it really? I mean, there was a few touches maybe. Obviously, he played a part in the goal, but in the main, you could see he was getting frustrated and, and he got fouled a couple of times, didn't he? And he was, he was appealing for yellow cards. So I, I think that's kind of in his mind. He's not he's not performed to, to his best abilities. He's not scored. Um, but yeah, from what I saw, he, you know, acknowledged the away fans and then walked down the tunnel sharpish um Mike Phelan caught him on the way off the pitch to kind of give him a handshake and a kind of pat on the back a kind of maybe listen it's not it's, it's the result that matters as you said there Ian like you know United are still in this you know they're still in the competition it's clearly something that he wants to win um, and then after all the players have kind of shook each other's hands Harry Maguire kind of ushers the players over to the away fans and, and every all all United players that have played a part are all there kind of a, a clapping so that's kind of the picture that I, I portrayed obviously there's a picture of Ronaldo giving a, a clap to the away fans. I don't know exactly how long that went on for, but people are obviously coming back at me on Twitter and saying, you're a liar, you're, you're twisting the truth. And so, okay, clarification, he obviously did clap the away fans, but I'm saying that... Momentarily. Still, that momentarily. I don't momentarily, know. Momentarily, yeah. But they stop watch out, I'd be intrigued. Um, but at the moment where the team was en masse, he, he wasn't there, you know, he was down the tunnel. So I think that point still is relevant. And listen, you can have, you can debate whether that's important or not. You know, people might say, who cares? You know, if he does the business on the pitch, who cares if he stays out afterwards? So that's fine. I'm not sort of passing judgment on that. But in that moment, that's why I saw. Andy, you want to say something? Well, well, I care. I think that players should applaud away fans at every match. And I wrote the story in Newcastle when Ronaldo was one of the players who, who walked off. I think it's important. Do you know when it first became an issue? It was against a team called Atletico Madrid in 1991. And the Manchester United team, the entire team, walked off the pitch without thanking the 2000 away fans. And four days later... Uh, or, or for the next home game, because there was no instant communication like now, the players collectively issued a, an apology, saying that they were uh, um, upset because they conceded goals and, and, and lost the match. With Ronaldo, uh, after the game uh, in, in Madrid, I saw him go behind the way and stand on a box, confiscate uh, the <laughs> microphone off the leader of uh, Atletico Madrid's ultras, get the Alanga song going, <laughs> clapping all the time in unison. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm surprised you missed that, Laurie. <laughs> oh, it's, I've got an agenda, that's why. <laughs> I wasn't uh, I, I wasn't watching it at, at the end for whatever reason, but the, I think that the point, it, it, I, and I feel pretty strongly about it, and it's not the most important thing in the world, the performances are, but players should thank away fans. And if you don't do that, it's not a good look. So how exactly are you going to describe this scenario, Laurie, in your piece that you're writing on Ronaldo that probably is on The Athletic and dropping right about the time people are listening to this podcast? I think I'll explain it exactly as Andy has. I, I missed the moment where Ronaldo was conducting the away end and getting them all in syn synchronicity, um, making sure that there was no different versions going on. Yeah, no, we've got a, a piece. Um, hopefully it's out by the time this podcast is aired, um, just on Ronaldo and... His talks behind the scenes, I suppose, is a fair way to describe it, of wanting support up top. So, you know, as a two, which is something, to be fair, Ralph Ranić had originally in his 4 2 2, two system. You know, there was a, a strike partner there for him to bounce off, realising that Ronaldo up front on his own, the pressing style wasn't going to work. And even then, you know, does he need someone to bounce off? Because against Atletico, it was there was moments where he, he felt he, he felt isolated and he was coming deep. I mean, there's one point um, in the first half, I think, where he came to right back slot just to touch the ball because he hadn't touched the ball for, for such a long time. Trying to avoid that Lukaku record, wasn't he, I think? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was, I mean, seven touches and, and that was, I mean, that's interesting because they're sort of maybe not passing to him and he's maybe making the runs but not properly showing for the runs. It's a weird one. I don't, I can't quite figure out whether it's Ronaldo not showing for the ball enough because sometimes he has dropped too deep and, and you know, got involved in build-up that then you're thinking, well, we need someone in the box to kind of finish this off. Um, or whether it's the players 
not producing good enough passes. I mean, listen, Bruno Fernandes gave the ball away 23 times last night. He was, you know, short, long, he was getting it wrong in all sorts of ways before finally providing a sixth assist in a row in the Champions League, you know, a record. It's crazy that you can kind of feast or famine with Bruno. Um, but so I can understand Ronaldo's frustrations there. But so he's he's talking behind the scenes about having two up top. Um, I think Ralph Rangnick's got reservations because that might then alter James Sancho's role in the team because he's been on a good run of form on that right wing. On the left wing, he was sort of switching last night with, with Marcus Rashford. Um, and and so it's it's kind of it's an, an interesting dynamic, really, as to how much players are involved with, you know, the kind of systems that are put out on the pitch. And, and clearly Ronaldo's, you know, a strong-minded individual. He's got his own thoughts on how he would like United to be set up. And, and he's scored so many goals in his career that he's saying, this is how I think I can score more. Ralph Rannick, obviously, has got to balance the whole team. Um, that's his role as manager. So it'll be an interesting one to sort of observe going forwards. 